chakras are actually energy gates which come off of the body. They come from the central nervous system out of the spine. So if we were to stand you sideways and using the spinal column as our visual from the front to the back, out of each part of that spinal column where these major chakra points are, that's what we're addressing right now is the major, we will see these tornado-like energy gates which come out of specific points. And as they come out of these specific points, they're spinning like these tornadoes with these little motors, giving this, this energy gate or chakra point its rhythm, giving it its balance, giving it its direction, giving it its flow. The seven major chakra points are located at the root, which comes out of the base of our spine line. And then as we move up the body, we have the sacral, which is just below the belly button. And it moves out the front and the back of the body. When it comes out of the back of the body, it is the will, it is the drive, it is that movement forward, that thing that keeps us going. Out of the front of the body, it's associated with the emotion, how we feel about where we're going, how we react, how we associate and contribute to our place within that point. Then we move up a little bit further above the belly button and we have our solar plexus. This is also the back being the will, the front being the emotion. It's the who we are, where we're going kind of thing about that chakra we move up on the, to the chest point, we're looking at the heart chakra point. So again, the will in the back, the emotion in the front, spinning out of that central part of the central nervous system of our spinal column. Then we go up to the throat, which kind of, you see that kind of like in the hollow spot of your throat. If you were to hold your fingers up by your throat and, and while you're speaking, hold your fingers there and feel the vibration points that's where that chakra point is coming from, that, that point in our neck. Then we have the third eye, which is between the two physical eyes. Then we have from the top of our head, the crown. This and the root are connected through the top and the bottom of the spinal column. These are the major energy gates, the seven major chakra points. As we go through each one of the different chakra points and the different parts of the body, I will also briefly touch on the 21 minor and the 14 lesser chakra points which are associated throughout the body. The purpose of these chakras or energy gates is to supply the body with life force energy, chi, prana, ki, whatever words you want to use to describe that energy. It's that life force. It's what keeps us going. Anything that is alive exudes this energy. We took and rubbed the palms of our hands together. What do you feel? What do you feel when we're rubbing it on there? We're beginning to feel a friction. And as you pull them apart, you can feel that little bit of an energy pulse, that little bit of a, some people will say tingling. Some people will say, pressure or like two magnets pushing away from one another. That pulse, that heat, that vibration, that tingling is your energy flowing. That's your life force, who you are. It's all around the body. It's all around who we are as living, existing beings. Chakras look like many little tornadoes spinning. The tail of this tornado is connected to the spinal column in the central nervous system. And it comes out from the front of the body. And then you have another one that connects at the exact same point on the back side, which comes out the back of the body. Like I said in the beginning part of this, that back is the will, the drive to move forward. The front is the emotion and the reaction of it. The cone or the open part of this tornado is the exit point of the energy. It's like the blowing forward of that energy. In the front of the body, we get that emotion that comes out from us. From the back, we put out the energy that keeps pushing us forward to give us that drive to go on. Within each of these tornadoes are little tornadoes or little cylinders, or as we're gonna talk about within each of the specific chakra points, those little 
vortexes that keep us going, that keep them spinning, whether they spin really fast and, and keep us so that we can't even think straight because they're going so fast and out of control or so slow that we just feel so weighed down and so heavy because like at the root, we don't have that many vortexes. It's going to spin slower. That's why it's important to keep that nice, slow, steady rhythm going, which we'll talk about when we get into that point. These little tornadoes are what keep the energy, the chi, the prana of who we are, happy and healthy as we move forward. So if you take a pencil and draw a tornado, start at the bottom and, or top, whichever works for you, and draw a tornado on a piece of paper. And visualizing this tornado, within one, each one of those tornadoes, we're gonna draw some other little tornadoes to keep it going. That's what we're striving for, to have a perfect tornado that's coming out, creating an energy releasement that makes us who we are, happy, healthy, well-adjusted, fantastic human beings that we've come to be. Let's move on in our journey to start talking about each individual chakra point. To get a little bit of a better understanding of the chakra point's movement, we need to talk about it in a way that we can understand what that tornado resembles. As I told you, when you draw your tornado, whether you start at the bottom or you start at the top, it's going to be spinning in a specific direction. And as it's spinning in a specific direction, it's going to tell us if it's healthy, if it's just kind of vibrating or just kind of being there, or if it's counter and it's negative and it's, new and it, and it's just not flowing in a healthy manner. Sometimes what happens within these vortexes is that they go a little bit off. 
like I said, in the four-cylinder engine. So in order for us to have a healthy chakra point, in order for us to have a healthy motor within our vehicle, we have to make sure that all of those cylinders, all of those vortexes are spinning in the right direction. It's really important to understand this. I love the commercial on the Dyson vacuum cleaner. Don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but he has developed what I like to look at and classify as the perfect chakra point. Within his vacuum cleaner, he has all these little cones of, of um, suction, vacuum, spinning, whatever you want to call them, vortexes. And as they work, it gives that cyclonic um, spinning motion, which gives him the perfect suction, which runs this vacuum cleaner. It's the exact same thing within our chakra point. When all these little vortexes within those chakra points are spinning and operating, in a proper direction, we have a good, clean result within our own chakra points. So when our chakras are spinning properly, being propelled properly by our little motors, we're balanced and we're healthy. So take a piece of paper, take a pencil, and just start doodling. I want you to draw circles. Doodle circles around on your paper. What direction? Do you tend to draw your circle? Do you tend to draw your circle in a backwards direction from the left to the right? Or do you go from the right to the left? Or do you sit there for a few minutes and think, mm, which way do I wanna go? We need to try to keep that kind of balance within our chakra points where it's like the minute hand of the clock going in a positive direction, always spinning positively, always going in the right direction. We don't want to go negative and we don't want to be neutral. We want to have the ability to move forward. I would like to begin our discussion with chakra point number one or root. That's our grounding, our support, our base. So the meaning of chakra one or the root is support. It's what holds us firm. It's what keeps us connected. Let's do an exercise. I want you to stand up nice and tall. I want you to plant your feet about shoulder width apart. Have them nice and square. Kind of go ahead and shake your body a little bit and release any tensions that you might feel. Kind of square yourself in there. Now I want you to imagine somebody coming up behind you. And when they come up behind you, they bump into you with their shoulder. What do you do? Do you stand firm? Do you stand true? Or do you waver? Or do you just plain fall off balance? This is a case of, is our root grounded? Is our root centered strong and firm coming out the base of our spine and grounding into Mother Earth? The element associated with the root is Earth. So consequently, we know that it's really important that we hold on to that strength. When that root is balanced, we feel like we're grounded, like we're rooted, like we're a strong and true tree. Your health will be sound and safe, and you'll know that you're okay, that you'll prosper, and that everything is okay right here and right now. If it's not balanced and grounded, you'll be resistant to change. You'll overeat. Sometimes obesity is included in their greed, a person who's a workaholic, or they spend too much, or they're fearful, or they're anxious, or they feel disconnected from their body. A lot of times they'll feel like they're floating out about two inches away from themselves. They feel spacey or restless, unable to sit still. These are things that are keeping us from feeling grounded, keeping us from feeling centered. Some of the issues associated with the chakra point our survival. So it's the survival of the fittest is the person who's the one that's grounded and centered. Their self-preservation. They're the person that can get in there and work and hold themselves true. Remember we talked about that vortex spinning in a clockwise direction. Sometimes we get one or two of those little things that are spinning out of balance and it makes us waver a little bit when we're bumped by life situations that come up. And we also know that when this chakra point is nice and strong, that we have the right to be who we are. 
What we have come here to do, what we have come here to be physically in this earth is who we are. And that it's okay and that we're safe, we're centered, we're focused. We know what's going on. A person whose chakra point is spinning in a negative direction or spinning counterclockwise, they're the ones that aren't able to hold on to the reality of time and space. They're the ones that tend to have some excessive behavior that comes forward. The color red is associated with this chakra point. So if we were talking about a way to bring the chakra point into balance, we would say, let's spend about seven minutes with some red energy around us. Whether it be we look at the color red or we use color red glasses or we just focus ourselves in some red, we're going to start feeling better in about seven minutes. We're gonna start feeling our grounding come into focus, come into center. The organs associated with this um, chakra point are the adrenals. Physically, it's the spinal column and the kidneys. So sometimes we'll feel a little bit of out of balance in that area. And it's associated with our rooting, our grounding, our ability to be connected to the earth. It's that will to live, that physical energy that gives us the reason to get up in the morning and get out and go and to do and to be. Another thing that is beneficial to this um, chakra point to help it feel balanced is the tone of C. So if we were doing a do, re, mi, fa, so what do Do is that grounding, nice, slow, rhythmic C note that keeps us centered. And the herb cedar is beneficial to help this chakra point feel centered, to help this chakra point feel grounded and rooted into the earth. So these are just little things that we can do that are gonna benefit. We're gonna use the color red. We're gonna use some earth energy, maybe plant. Maybe go put some plants in the, a flower bed. Maybe go plant a garden. Maybe go out and spend some time around the trees, feeling that strong security, that connection to earth. Our physical identity, having motivation, feeling that it's okay to go forward. So now let's go back to the exercise that we did at the beginning. Visualizing ourselves planted firm and steady into the earth, like a root system of a plant, bringing up that life force energy up through the earth, up through our bodies, bringing it up into our energetic being through our connections with the earth. Also circulating it back down and letting go of the toxins, the waste, the stress, the tension, anything that keeps us from focusing, anything that keeps us from being who it is that we came to be. Grounded, centered, healthy, strong, surviving, physical human beings that are able to be healthy and to maintain a balanced life. The sacral, that's our second chakra point. This chakra point is associated with the element of water. It's our emotions. It's, we look at ourselves and we feel okay who we are in this physical body that we are. I feel okay with my sexuality as a female. I feel okay with my sexuality as a male, whichever you happen to be. That feeling, that emotion, that strength, that knowing who we are within our sexuality and emotion and feeling and pleasure zones. That's what the sacral is based on. When we're looking at the sacral, we're looking at the sweetness of life. We're seeing the chakra point in the abdomen and it associates with the genitalia, and it associates with the lower back and the hips. It is, like I said, associated with the water element, which is emotions. It's also self-gratification, like I said. I'm okay with who I am. I feel good about what I want. And it's okay for me to feel the way that I do. It's also associated with the reproductive systems. Sometimes we can have imbalances by our births. 
by being born, by a birth of a child of our own. And these can bring this little chakra point out of balance. This can bring in some negative things that need to be cleared away. This can be some things that we look at the quality of our life, of our love, of our sexual energy. Bliss, deep rapture. That's where the color orange comes in. This chakra point vibrates to the color orange. And if we looked at the color orange for about 10 minutes, like we were looking at red with the root, we look at it for about 10 minutes, we're going to help the digestion, the metabolism, getting rid of like cramps or spasms or whatever might be bothering you in that area. Whatever may make you feel like it's not balanced. A couple other things that could be beneficial to this chakra point could be an orris root or gardenia or using the second note in the do re which would be d of the musical scale the vibrational pulse of that will help bring that chakra point into a balance help you feel more self-gratification help you to be able to feel that it's okay you know emotionally everything is fine um how do you feel how do you feel within the body that you have? That's what you need to look at. That's what you need to understand. We need to look past the things that have scarred us. We need to look past the things that have hurt us, and we need to bring it back into focus. Some of the things that lean us towards understanding and imbalance in the second chakra would be somebody who suffers with a lot of lower back pain or hip problems or digestion problems, maybe bladder and urinary tract infections the reproductive organs may have some problems. Or maybe just kind of be an overall stiff and frigid. Those are the kind of things that we need to look at. Those are the kind of things that we need to say, okay, I need to fix this. So what are we gonna look for in a chakra point that is healthy, that is going in a good um, direction, that's, that's spinning pro properly? Carl, Ra Carl Jung called the study of the chakras a journey through the psychic hygiene of life. So we're basically cleaning up our lives. And the, uh, the, the flowing of the energy of this chakra is smoothly. Or are the seas rough? Is that water coming in smooth? Is it sound? Is it flowing evenly? Is our emotion okay? Are our desires okay? Are our wants good? Are needs good and balanced? Are our feelings and sensitivities proper? Remembering this chakra point, like I said, is associated with our emotion, who we are within we who in our own time and space. It's what we have come to be. I'm here to be a female. I'm here to be a male. I'm here to accomplish what I've come to accomplish. And it's okay for me to have self-gratification. It's okay for me to feel. It's okay for me to feel. Chakra three, the solar plexus. The element of fire rules this chakra point. It's the core, the seat of who we are. It's that fire that burns deep down within our gut. The energy level of this chakra point is a strong metabolism. Overall strength, your will to move forward. It's uh, that strength, that, that, that very centered, lustrous jewel of who we are. It's power. It's our power game. It's where we have the definition of who we are. If I were to look at you and I were to say to you, who are you? Are you somebody's mother? Are you somebody's daughter? Are you somebody, 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 somebody's? Or are you able to look at me and say, I am, and then tell me who you are? That's that core. That's that center. That's that self definition of who we are. We're able to act. We have a healthy ego of who we are. Once again, fire being that element. Carnation is the herb that works well with this chakra point. 
When this chakra point is in balance, you'll find that you know your own personal power. You can stand up with confidence. You can know that you 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 know. know. There's no wavering. There's no second guessing. There's no doubting. You don't give yourself to others or allow them to steal things away from who you are. You came to be who you are. It's in the stomach region and it's stronger and you have the drive to live your life to the very fullest, to the very fullest. When it's out of balance, you let others affect how you feel about what you're doing where you're at in life, where you're heading. If it's someone else in the wheel of your life, sometimes we have to question, what am I here for? What am I supposed to be doing? Is it when we ask these questions that we realize that we're out of balance? It's when we can look at the core and the center and see who we are. Some of the organs associated with it are the pancreas. Physically, it's the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, the nervous system. You ever hear a person who has a nervous tummy? They might need to start checking that center, that solar plexus, and see where's that chakra point at? Where's there that little bit of an imbalance? We know who we are in this big picture of life. We know where our central core is. The color associated with this chakra point is yellow. It vibrates to yellow. And like the other chakra points, if we spend approximately 12 minutes allowing that color vibration to work within us, it helps to nurture the nervous system, the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys. It helps bring back that balance to this this center, this core, the center being of who we are. The uh, musical note that benefits this is the third on our do, re, mi. So we're looking at E. So if we played that note and we had that vibration of that tone, that's going to help bring it into a balance. When we go into doing the meditation CD on this, we will be using methods and tools of ways to bring each one of these chakra points into a balance, into a proper rhythm that keeps us healthy and strong. To improve this chakra, I want you to visualize yourself improving your own power, drawing your own power back to yourself opening up who you are breathing allowing that center of oxygen to bring into the gut the energy nice breaths sending life to your solar plexus make room in your tummy for that fire to burn set goals every day of your life small goals that are obtainable big goals that you need to work towards and Accomplish them to the very best of your ability by bringing this into balance, <clears throat> centering in, bringing that strength, bringing that core of who we are, knowing I am who I am. I have the knowledge. I have the fire burning deep within myself, and I know who I am. Chakra four is our heart. The heart. Is your heart stuck? Is your heart stuck in grief? Is your heart stuck in sorrow? Is your heart stuck in sadness? Have we allowed others to just walk all over us? Or is your heart open? Treating others with honor and respect refraining from causing harm. This includes to ourselves. When we feel joy, compassion, empathy, and understanding spirit and acceptance. When we have balance in our heart, we can look at everything with that total unconditional love. That for lack of better words, that Christ-like love. That love that says, body, mind, and spirit, I love and I love you with every ounce of my being, including ourselves, 
able to look in the mirror and say, good morning, beautiful, I love you for who you are. Keeping the boundaries of safety around ourselves, not allowing others to harm us and cause us ill. We all have the right to love and be loved just as we are. And when we look at the heart chakra point, we are looking at unconditional mind of God love. That self-acceptance. The element associated with this is air. To love and to be loved. The social acceptance of ourselves, the social acceptance of others, having that God-like love. Hearts associated with this, blood, the vagan nervous system, the circulatory system, love, oneness of life. It also has the thymus associated with it. This organ has 12 vortexes to it. The vortexes being the little motors that keep it spinning in a healthy, proper direction. The color green associates with this chakra point. And if we looked at green for 15 minutes, we would notice that it brings into the mental and physical equilibrium. It's the center of the body. It's harmonizing. It's balancing. It's giving us that ability to love with the unconditional love, which says you can't hurt me anymore, but I still love you. I've got the boundaries there. We take care of ourselves. We give out the love to others. This is not a lustful love. This is not a desirous love. This is that central, in the center of who we are, We open this up with giving that opening of our chest to allow that love to flow freely and we can look at ourselves and say, I'm not stuck. I have the mind of God love. There's no limitations on the love for myself and for others. When we allow others to harm us, and control our love, we need to bring that back into balance. When we try to control others with manipulating love for them, we need to bring our heart back into balance. We need to remember that love is life and the openness of love and life is what keeps us healthy and happy loving human beings. If you put fuel into a vehicle that's not supposed to be in there, it's not going to run. It might run for a little bit, but it'll burn up the motor. If you put in the fuel of love within your own body, you will find that you can go forward in great and mighty ways simply because We have allowed that balance to encompass us, mind, body, and spirit, and found true peace within ourselves. The throat, chakra number five. throat is associated with communication. How do we talk to people? How do we express ourselves? Do we speak impeccably with our words? Or do we speak destructively with our words? Do we throw up all over people? Or do we actually hear what we're going to say before we say it? If you hear the words before you say them, a lot of times they're not going to come out of your mouth, aren't they? That self-expression, that creativity, The element of sound is associated with this. Frankincense and benzene are herbs that are associated with this chakra point. 
It's purification of our words. If you hold your hand at your throat and say the alphabet, feel the vibration, feel the pulse. The throat is associated with that sound. It's like strumming a string and the vibration going off and sending off that vibrational energy out throughout the universe. That's what our words do. That's how they send out the message. They vibrate out and give the word out and the, and the meaning out. So if we say it to them in a mean and nasty and harmful way, people are going to respond to that. If we use it with tender kindness and compassion, people are going to respond to that. Our throat is the way that we can express ourselves, creativity. The thyroid is associated with this chakra point, the bronchial, the vocal cords, the lungs. We need to take in and process our words. We need to get the sense of ourselves through our words. It's okay to be heard. It's okay to put forth the words, but how are we putting them forth? If our chakra point's out of balance, they're gonna come out like we're throwing up all over people rather than being giving and loving with our words and compassionate with our words. The color blue is associated with the throat. This blue is peace and tranquility. If we looked at blue for 15 minutes, we can help bring that into vibration. If we looked at it in the musical note, it would be G or so. And by bringing the throat into balance, we can get the message across to the rest of the world that we want to bring forward. If you were to say, I've been affected by the words of others in my life, you're not pretty. You can't do that. Or have we been told, you are beautiful. You are incredible. You can do anything that you set your mind to do. There's a difference in how we look at it. Do a little exercise. If you feel like you've been affected by others and the words that they said and limitations that others have put there for us with their words, Take those words and draw a circle. Put them inside the center of this circle. You're ugly. You're not pretty. You can't do that. You're too short. You're too tall. You're too round. You're too thin. Any of those kind of things. Write them inside the center of this circle. When you feel like you're done, spend some time at it. Allow yourself time to process that. Hear these words. Things you may have heard when you were a kid on the playground. Things you may have heard out on the ball field. Better, better, better. You can't hit that ball. Rip that up. After you've put all the words that you want to put in there, just rip it up. Rip those words away from yourself. Then turn around and fill them with the words of loving kindness. I can do this. I am able to do that. I am beautiful. I am perfectly created. I am, I am, I am. Allowing the words to come forward like they're supposed to come forward. Realizing that it's okay to be heard. It's okay to bring forth the message that you have to bring forth. Speak impeccably. Using your voice with love and compassion and kindness. Kind of get an idea that all these chakra points are starting to run together to create us into the people that we are. To help us when we're operating and balanced from the root to the crown, we are who we came to be, all created, all flowing together. It's an exciting journey. Chakra point number six, the third eye. How do we see the big picture? It's right between the, the two physical eyes in a brow area. It's how we perceive things. It's that big picture of life. Do you have blinders on? Do you have like a horse that's in a, in a race that they put a blinder on them so they go straight where the jockey's leading them? Or do we have the blinders removed so that we can see everything going on around us? So that we can see the beauty of the world, so that we can see the beauty of our existence, so we can see what's happening. The third eye is able to see beyond into the big picture. The elemental energy of the third eye is sight and light. When we look with the third eye, we don't just see what's in front of our natural faces. Rather, we see beyond and into the space around us. We are 
of the image we carry with us. Do we see ourselves negatively? Do we see ourselves positively? The third eye is intuition, seeing that big picture. It's reflective, self-reflection. How do we see ourselves back? If it's spinning in a proper direction, if all those little vortexes, and there are 96 vortexes in the third eye, they're all spinning in a proper direction, then we're seeing things how we're supposed to see things, and we have a right to see them that way. We see our archetypal self. Light being the element, mugwort and star anus, Um, the note that associates with this is la or a. The lower brain, the pituitary, the left ear, eyes, nose, and nervous system. Visualization, how we see the big picture, how we fit into that big picture are a couple of important things. Once again, if we spend 15 minutes looking at the color indigo, indigo is a color of that ethereal quality, integrity. Spending time building that up that way. Headaches can be associated with the third eye that's blocked. The pineal gland is associated with this chakra. It's that light meter. It's the melatonin and serotonin. Sleep, dreams, those type of things associate with this. Do an exercise that's kind of fun with the, the eyes. I'm not gonna give you the answer until you go do this. So you're gonna wanna pause your, your CD as you're listening. I want you to go into the bathroom and I want you to look at your eyes. I want you to cover your left eye and look at the right eye in the mirror. Then I want you to take and jot down what you see with your right eye or what you see in your right eye. Describe that eye. Is it clear? Is it bright? Is it dim? However, whatever you see. What are the colors? That type of thing. Then I want you to cover the right eye and I want you to look at the left eye. I want you to go and then after you look at that, write down what it is you see seeing the big picture of looking into the eye. So by doing that exercise, you're creating a reality of what you see, who you are, who are you reflective of? Who are you a reflection of? And it's kind of fun to do this because, yeah, I want you to keep thinking about this. I'm not giving you the answer quite yet because I don't want you to cheat and get ahead on me. We get the big picture. We perceive who we are. We're getting the intuition of that, our self-reflection. We're able to see and we're able to use integrity with who we are. And by the way, if you looked with the left eye and it was clear, you're relating to your mother. If you see more clarity in your right eye, you're relating to your father. That might help you understand some of your, of your unbalances or your balances, whichever way you want to look at it. Kind of a fun little exercise. So the third eye is looking at that big picture in life. What's going on around you? What's happening? What's going on? Signs of balance in this is that your intuition is healthy, your insight's healthy, you have good imagination, memory is strong, can recall your dreams, and you're able to visualize. If it's out of balance, you might have some delusions, obsessions, nightmares or the inability to concentrate, fatigue, lack of imagination. Can see, can't see the big picture before you, you deny it, and you can't see solutions. Like I said, we're a horse on the track with the blinders on, or are we a, ho a horse out in the pasture seeing the beauty of the universe beyond the physical? Being able to see and perceive and know our self-reflection who we are in the big picture of life. Lastly, we're gonna look at chakra point seven, the crown. The crown is information and it's directly opposite of the root. The root being grounded and focused on staying centered, the crown is our ability to be unmuddled, to think straight without clouds of confusion. The representation for the crown is the lotus flower. If you have problems in the crown, disassociation, addictions, confusion,
confusion for a head person, a cynic, closed-minded, religious, rigid, rigid beliefs, or your mind is cluttered. I cannot go to sleep at night. My mind will just not shut off. Need to do some balancing in the crown. Need to bring that crown back into center. Focus it. It's at the top of the head, the cerebral point. It's awareness, it's clarity. It's your personal CPU. It's your connection to understanding what's going on. If all your folders are out all over your desk, you're not organized, you're not together. It's like a computer, if you wanna open up the files, you can open up a hundred files if you want. Just close them and put them back where they belong. Keeping that CPU clear and clean, it's self-knowledge. It's where you know. You know that you know that you know. It identifies with the universal information. The vibration vortexes are 972. That's a lot of activity going on up there. No wonder we get crazy sometimes and we just get going talking so fast. We feel like we're crazy. We need to bring it back in. Need to bring that vortex back into balance. That chakra point spinning in a clockwise manner in a nice steady balance. It's the upper brain and the right ears, clarity of life, spirituality, emotional, and physical. The color associated with this is violet and white. Sometimes white, sometimes violet. It depends on what you want to associate with. Violet is the fastest color vibration. It vibrates at the highest, fastest level of vibration. It's sedating and it's soothing. It also is a place where we connect with our higher power, with our higher belief system, where we connect with the I am, who we are through our I am. For that which we think, that are we. And it's interesting when I work with people and I'm bringing them into balance, they get that self-knowledge, they get the confidence they want, they get their grounding, they find their center, they know that they can feel, they know that it's okay. It all comes from the reality that we have been created for a higher purpose, by a higher essence, for a higher whatever our belief process may be. Whether you believe in a God, whether you believe in Buddha, whether you believe in Confucianism, whether you believe in nature, or you have the Native American traditions, it's okay because that's who you are. It's okay because that's what you believe. When we bring all of the chakra points into balance and we bring all of these major points to the proper vibrations, to the clarity that we need, we're able to be healthy, happy, productive, able to think clearly, able to speak impeccably, able to love unconditionally, able to have our own power, the willpower to move forward, to know that it's okay to feel and to want and to have and to be. It all comes together in one big package, which is you and which is me. This has been the teaching tape on chakras, teaching CD on chakras. I've enjoyed sharing the information with you. And at this point in time, I encourage you to stretch, move around a little bit, whatever, and prepare to get ready for CD2, which is going to be the guided meditation of helping you to know how to bring these chakra points into balance. A few little tips that you can use to do this is if you take a bath, put some salt, Epsom salt, sea salt, just a little bit in the water. That'll help center you. That'll help ground you. You can visualize and feel each one of these chakra points spinning in a proper direction. Sometimes it helps to hold a hand over the, the chakra point and make a circle over top of like your chest where your heart would be, going in a clockwise manner, pretending your hand is a minute hand and going around in a clockwise direction. Then over your solar plexus, over your third eye, over your crown, wherever you feel led to do, that's a way you can balance it. Listen to music that enhances the musical notes of do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. 
bringing it all into balance, bringing into the tones, using color, keeping color surrounding you, allowing the beauty of the universe to bring you the reds, the yellows, the oranges, the greens, the blues, the indigos, the violets. Visualizing, hearing, seeing, sensing, and knowing. Being who it is we came to be. Enjoy your life.